everyone. <laughs> Hope that we are live. Time. Uh, let's try it once again and uh, and start from uh, the point that the translation was broke. <laughs> so maybe Alexander can hop on from that moment. Okay, so how can how can I how can I check that my uh, that everybody can can hear me? So let me. Mm -hmm. So uh, Alex, uh, do you think that that uh, that people can hear me right right now? So this is oh great so which basically means that you hear me okay great so let me then And you hopefully see see my slides. Okay, great, great. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let me start from uh, from the very beginning. Uh, once again, so our plan is to tell you about two things. So the first one is how to match students and universities in a mathematically optimal way. I will, of course, define what I mean by saying that the way is, is optimal. And then we will tell uh, a few words about our new computer science and artificial intelligence program. So this program is designed in, uh, uh, by JetBrains company. And this is a program at Neapolis University of Paphos at Cyprus. So, and we will basically tell how we make this uh, program interesting for for well-prepared students. Okay, so let's start with uh, with the mathematical foundations, so to say, of, of the process. Uh, and let me motivate it by the following like real life scenario. So imagine uh, a student uh, whose name is Alice and assume that she is going to do an internship at an IT company, which is called ClueNet. But then the next day, assume that there is another company which is called Web Exodus uh, that also suggests Alice to do an internship with them. And then Alice finds herself in a situation where she actually likes the Web Exodus company more than the ClueNet company. So she decides to, to go with them, uh, to go with Web Exodus instead of, uh, instead of doing an internship at ClueNet. Then ClueNet decides to, to, to try to find another intern. And then they look at the preference list and they realize that the second uh, person in the list is Bob. So they suggest Bob to make an, uh, to do an internship with them. But it turns out that Bob already accepted an offer from, from Bubblesoft, but then Bob realizes that uh, he prefers ClueNet to Bubblesoft. So he decides to do an internship with the ClueNet instead of doing an internship with Bubblesoft. Then probably there is another person, Cindy, who actually is going to, to do an internship with Bubblesoft. However, she likes uh, Web Exodus more than Bubblesoft. So she decides why not to try to ask Web Exodus whether it is possible to, to work with them. And she does this. And then Web Exodus realizes that for some reason, Cindy is actually a, a top person in, in their list. But for some reason, they uh, haven't yet suggested Cindy to do an internship with them. So in general, this produces a house. 
right? And it is natural to ask whether it is possible to organize this matching process uh, in a self-enforcing way. Uh, whatever this means, but I will, of course, define this mathematically in, in a minute or so. Before this, let me mention uh, that the algorithm that I'm going to present is, is known as Gale Shapley algorithm. Uh, so here you see the picture of, of these two researchers. So, and in fact, in 2012, uh, Shapley received a Nobel Prize in Economics in particular for, uh, for developing this, this algorithm. Also, this algorithm has many applications, uh, not only in matching students and universities, but in many other uh, real life scenarios. And some of them, uh, uh, are listed here on the slide, and this is just the tip of an iceberg. So, for example, using this algorithm, you can also use, uh, you can also match, I'm sorry, interns to, to hospitals or patients to hospitals. You can also work with students and universities or dormitories and even queries and servers. Okay, so it is. I mean, uh, this algorithm has many applications in uh, in various uh, real life scenarios. Uh, so let me start by defining a mathematical model in which we are going to work. Uh, and as it usually happens with uh, with matching problems, it is convenient to do this in terms of men and women. So imagine that we have four men called A, B, C, D, and we have four women. Uh, called EFGH and assume that every man and every woman uh, has a ranking of, so every man has a ranking of all the other four women and every woman has uh, a ranking of four men. So for example, uh, woman F uh, prefers uh, a man D to, to the man B, to the man A, to the man C, okay? Uh, and our goal is to construct a matching between them. That is to break them into pairs. For example, this is one possibility to, to organize such a matching. So for every man and for every, uh, for every woman that we see here on the slide, I also highlight in the preference list uh, his or her partner, right? So, and this particular matching is called to be unstable. And this is what we mean by, stay, by saying unstable. So, uh, in this particular case, the pair CG is uh, an instability in the following sense. So, as we see here, so now it is like highlighted in red. So, the, the man C prefers uh, woman G. So first of all, C and G are not engaged. So they do not currently form a pair in our yellow matching. On the other hand, they prefer each other to their current partners. So for example, C prefers G to, to, her current, to his current partner H. And G, the woman G, prefers C to, to her uh, current partner uh, to her current partner uh, B, right? Okay, so this particular matching is unstable, uh, and the question is whether it is it is possible to uh, to construct a matching in this case which avoids such instabilities. And it turns out that it is possible. And for example, this particular matching is stable. Okay, so it is not immediate that it is uh, that it is stable because in order to check that it is stable, you need to go through all pairs of uh, a man and the woman that are not currently engaged and check whether they form an instability or not. But at least it is believable that in this case uh, it is stable because, for example, the man B uh, is engaged with the woman uh, H, who is the first woman in his list, right? And the woman. F is also engaged with a man D, who is a top man in her list. So definitely, the man B, for example, and the man uh, and the woman H, they cannot uh, be in any instability in this case. So unfortunately, the woman H, for example, is engaged to the man B in this particular case, uh, which is the, her least favorable choice. But but still, so this. Partic uh, this particular matching is actually stable. 
Okay, so now let me let me proceed to an algorithm uh, presented by Gale and Shapley, and they actually present an algorithm that uh, proves that for any sequence of n objects with such uh, with preference lists, it is possible to construct uh, a stable matching, and moreover, this can be done by a very simple algorithm. And I'm going to show you this algorithm uh, right now. Okay, so before before going into the details of uh, of this algorithm, let me uh, let me first uh, discuss uh, whether this mathematical model refl reflects the real life. Okay, because it is always important after uh, after defining a mathematical model to check whether it indeed uh, helps us to solve problems in real life. And in fact, you might ask questions about this particular model and uh, and it's corresponding to the IT companies and, uh, and interns that we've seen in the beginning. Because in my mathematical model, uh, there are N men and N women. Right, and definitely in real life, the number of interns uh, is not necessarily equal to the number of IT companies. Also, it is it is clear that in real life, it is not the case that every intern has a ranking of all IT companies. That the set of IT companies is is just large, and uh, every particular intern applies to probably a dozen of of companies. Right. And the same is true for companies. They do not have a, com uh, a complete ranking of all the possible interns, right? But the good news about our algorithm and about our mathematical model is that it covers all such cases easily. So I will speak about N men and, and women, and I leave you as an exercise to extend this model to the case where the number of uh, men is not the same as the number of women and if the preference lists are incomplete and so on. So let's just work with our clean mathematical model. And uh, as I stated, it actually covers all uh, all possible cases that you might uh, that you might face in, in real life. OK. Uh, okay, so the algorithm is, is very simple and it, it consists of a actually single while loop uh, uh, or we can think about this while loop as daily mating ritual. So every day the following happens. A, a man who currently has no, uh, has no pair or in other words a man M who who is not engaged to, uh, to any woman at this point of time uh, uh, selects a top woman from his preference list. So assume that the man that we're talking about right now is denoted by M and the woman from the top woman from his list is denoted by W. Okay, so he uh, goes and proposes to her and then the woman W proceeds as follows. So first of all, if she is free, she just accepts. So at this point, they form a pair. However, if she is not free at this point, then she is engaged to some other man M prime. And then she starts to compare M prime to M. If she prefers M prime to M, then there is no reason for her to, to accept, right? So she just declines in this case. In this case, M remains free. So probably some other day, uh, he will propose to some other woman. However, if uh, the woman W realizes that she prefers M to her, par to her current partner M prime, then she accepts. Okay, so then W and M form a pair and M prime becomes free. Okay, and this is basically the whole algorithm. So this is extremely beautiful about it. That this is this like four short sentences is well, this is probably not very formal description of this algorithm, but still. So I guess that most of you from this algorithm are already ready to implement this algorithm in your favorite programming language. And let me just to clarify all the details of this algorithm, let me just uh, show you how it works on, on another toy example. 
so in this uh, in this case we have five men and five women okay and for every man once again and for every woman i show the corresponding preference list so okay let's let's just start our meeting uh, ritual or our uh, our like daily meeting ritual or uh, our while loop so on the first day the man a proposes to the woman h okay because h is the first woman in his list so h is free at this point so she just accepts so let me uh, visualize it as follows so now for a uh, i highlight the man h and for the woman h i i not only highlight the man a in her preference list but i also cut the rest uh, uh, the tail of this list so remember that when a woman accepts uh, a proposal of some man she became engaged right and in the future she can only kind of retract her acceptance if some uh, if some other man that uh, that she prefers to her current partner proposes to her so in the future run of this algorithm the man uh, the pair or the partner of age can only improve so uh and this is the reason why i cut the tail of the preference list of the of the woman age okay so on the second day the man b is going to to press uh, to propose to the woman f this is what happens and once again they are both free so the woman f just accepts uh, his proposal and now they become engaged so they form a pair on the next day c proposes to i okay she is free so she accepts okay so on the next day d proposes to f okay at this point we see that f is not free at the same time the current partner of f is b and according to her preference list f prefers b to d so she just declines okay so this is what happens and at this point i just remove the woman b from the pre uh, the woman f i'm sorry from the uh, from the preference list of uh, uh, of men d okay so on the next day d uh, proposes to h okay so h is the next woman in in his list the next uh, like top woman in his list so d proposes to h but now we see that h actually prefers d to his to her i'm sorry current partner a which basically means that she accepts the current proposal of d and a becomes free okay so this is what happens so now d and h are engaged and a becomes free so on the next day a is going to to propose to some to some woman again uh, and actually the the next woman in the list of g is uh, of a i'm sorry is g so he proposes to g so g is currently free so she just accepts so on the next day e is going to to propose so e uh, proposes to f but f prefers uh, oh i'm sorry f actually prefers e to b so f uh, accepts his proposal and b becomes free okay then b needs to propose to somebody so b goes to g uh, and g actually prefers him to a so once again a becomes free at this point then a proposes to g and g is free so so he so she just accepts and this is this is a matching and it turns out that this particular matching is actually stable so uh, uh, what i haven't mentioned before is that why when uh we have uh the so-called perfect matching when there are n pairs then uh, the algorithm stops and we can actually prove that at this point of time the constructed matching is stable which is which is very good because i mean the algorithm is very simple so as as you write uh in the comments actually this is a greedy algorithm right it is very easily implemented it works in linear time in uh in the size of the 
of the input and it magically constructs uh, a solution for which it was not even initially clear whether it always exists or not. So at this point uh, we have uh, not just a proof of, of the existence of a stable matching for any initial configuration, but we only we also have a method of, of finding such uh, such a such a matching. So on the next slide, let me just prove that it is indeed a matching and it is it is stable. Uh, let me probably be be quick with this. So first of all. Uh, by the end of the day, we will indeed construct a matching. So, because uh, I assume, uh, for the sake of contradiction, that by the end of the day, uh, there is a man who has no pair. But since we have uh, the same number of men and women, uh, this basically means that there is also a free, a free woman. But this contradicts to the fact that this man proposes to, to all women. Right, to all the women. I'm, I'm sorry. So uh, by the end of the day, we just must have some matching. And let me just prove that when this perfect matching is constructed, then it is indeed uh, a stable matching. So assume once again, for the sake for the sake of contradiction, that there is some instability in the constructed matching, and this instability is is AC. So a man A and a woman C, so they, they do not form a pair and they both prefer each other to their uh, current partners. So uh, as this picture shows, A uh, forms a pair with D and A actually likes C more than D. And C forms a pair with B and C actually likes A more than B. Okay, so we need to find a contradiction in this small configuration, and it is not difficult uh, uh, to see this. So in this case, uh, definitely, since D is, uh, since A likes C more than D, she, uh, he, I'm sorry, must uh, propose to C before D, right? And since, uh, since C prefers A to B, then it is strange. Uh, so at this point, we, we arrive to the contradiction uh, with the fact that C actually is engaged to B, uh, uh, taking into account the fact that at, so at some point A proposed to C. Okay, so if C is engaged to B and A proposes to C, then uh, according to our algorithm, C must actually uh, must accept an offer from A, a proposal from A. Okay, so this is a formal proof. So probably this was not very formal, but but still, I hope it was understandable and uh, that it can be made completely formal. So uh, and I hope that you enjoy uh, uh, enjoy uh, this algorithm. And let me proceed now to the second part. And the second part of, of my talk is is actually uh, a discussion of, of our new uh, bachelor program called Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence. And uh, in a sense, in uh, in this part, I'm going to show you how we ensure that students rank uh, our uh, well, give a high rank uh, to our bachelor program when. Uh, when selecting among different uh, bachelor programs. So, by the way, this is a picture of, of the university. This is a picture of the inside. So there is a pool, uh, the, there are some palms, and as usual, there is a lot of sun on, on Cyprus. Okay, so basically, this is my last slide. And uh, on this slide, I'm going to show you uh, various advantages of, of our educational program. Uh, program and I'm going to break them into four into four blocks and the first block is called education of course so this is the most important part and uh, for the first uh, the first item inside this block is that we have a modern state-of-the-art program 
So we make sure that uh, we, as professors, we invite active researchers and industry professionals. So most of our mathematical or theoretical courses are taught by, by researchers who, who are active, who, who publish papers, and with whom you can publish papers uh, as a student. On the other hand, to teach programming courses or to teach technological courses, we usually invite professors from industry, or professionals from industry. Also, our program is designed by JetBrains and many people from JetBrains actually teach, teach courses. And also JetBrains is just a professional company that uh, develops programming languages, compilers, uh, professional tools, and so on. And many people are involved into our educational process. Uh, speaking about the, the fact that we have a modern program, of course, we do uh, teach many modern subjects like large language models. Uh, and in general, we, we try to cover such areas as artificial intelligence, uh, compilers, data science, machine learning, programming language, uh, languages, robotics, theoretical computer science, and so on. And besides of courses we also run various research seminars so for example right now we have a student seminar on algorithms on mathematics on, on robotics and in each of these areas we we try to to go through recent developments in in these areas together with with students and sometimes students give talks sometimes we invite professionals uh, professors researchers and, and so on Okay, so the next thing is that we uh, we ask our students to work on many hands-on projects during the during the studies. So we, at every course, even at mathematical course, we have many uh, homeworks where your goal is to implement something, and the such. Uh, such projects range from, from small laboratory projects where you can implement something in, in one week, for example, to, to some long projects so where your goal is to implement something during a term or probably during the, the whole year. And we also encourage our students to, to apply to summer internships at, at various companies. And uh, most of our students actually enjoy doing this during during summers. Okay, so on the one hand, we, we try to, to teach many technological courses. On the other hand, we believe that fundamental uh, that fundamentals are also important. And here I show our curriculum to emphasize that there are a lot of mathematical courses also in uh, in our bachelor program. So calculus, algebra, discrete mathematics, uh, probability theory, statistics, uh, theoretical computer science, and also many electives. So we feel that uh, it is important for professional uh, computer scientists to know uh, the fundamentals of computer science very well, to be able not only to use technologies, but also to develop new technologies. Okay, uh, so the next block is called is called networking, and here we also believe that uh, another important aspect of education, is, I mean, getting. Uh, uh, uh taking courses is important but what is equally probably important is meeting new people meeting your peers and meeting professors so let me show you the the pictures of some of our properties this is the core of our team uh so the uh, many of them are, are actually quite young and and actually uh we we work in in different areas uh, starting from like algebra and topology and to software engineering and robotics artificial intelligence machine learning algorithms competitive programming and so on mm. okay so uh meeting your professors is of course important you will learn a lot from them you will uh like 
implement projects with them, you will write research papers with them, but you will also meet uh, other students, and this is also very important. And in our bachelor program, we have many students who are very well prepared and very motivated to study. And uh, studying uh, near such a peers is very important because you will help each other and you will learn from each other. Okay, and our students are indeed, so many of our students are actually winners of, of various prestigious uh, Olympiads, both at student level at, and at high school level. Okay. Uh, so, what is also important uh, during your studies is to attend various uh, additional activities that help you to go deeper into a particular field that you like or you enjoy. So, some of our students enjoy participating in programming contests and we do, of course, support, uh, support them, so we have two world champ champions in, in ICPC. So Pavel Mavrin, uh, you see him here on the slide in the middle of the top row. Uh, we also have Mias Nigmatulian and uh, Pasha is, is teaching a course on, on algorithm. Nias uh, trains, um, trains teams who are interested in participating in competitions. Uh, also on the top row, you can see uh, Alexandra Dushenka, one of our professors, uh, together with students who participated this year in uh, mathematical contents, in an international mathematical contest for students. Uh, at the at the bottom row, you see also some some public events that we organize. So sometimes we organize just just single lectures by industry professionals. Sometimes we organize uh, student schools where you can learn something, for example, robotics or, or distributed computing during a week from invited professors. And it is important to participate in such, uh, in such events, and we try to organize as many of them as possible. In particular, all of these pictures are taken in uh, 2023, so we organized all of them, and not only this, uh, during the last year. Uh, okay, so you are probably uh, getting your education in order to ensure that you will have this career boost, and we also, of course, feel that this is important, so let me just mention what we what we do for this. So, first of all, as I mentioned, we, we make sure to uh, invite uh, industry professional to teach courses. So sometimes it is courses, sometimes it is just like single lectures, but in any case, we, we believe that it is very important that uh, programming courses are given by professionals for whom programming is the, the main job that they know industry very well. And this is important because uh, program software engineering or like applied computer science developed rapidly. So if you just stay uh, at the university and you are not connected to industries then probably your courses can uh, become outdated uh, very, very rapidly. Okay. Uh, the, the next thing is that, well, we, uh, our bachelor program at Neapolis University of Paphos is, is quite young. Uh, I mean, it is just one, one year old. However, at JetBrains, we were working on organizing educational program for, for more than 10 years. In particular, I myself have been uh, in, uh, in organizing various educational activities for something like 15 years. And we have many graduates all over the world. And uh, I'm proud to say that actually for, for all of our graduates, I mean, graduating from our programs is not, 
is not an easy task. So this is challenging. But if you graduate, then definitely it will not be a problem for you to find a job either in industry or in academia. So many of our students, uh, many of our graduates work in like top IT companies and some of them are, are mentioned here, but some of them decide to to continue as their studies and to do research. And they also, we have like graduates that went into PhD studies to, to top schools like Harvard or NYU or Stanford or ETH and EPFL in, in Europe. Okay, uh, so finally the last uh, the last block in uh, in this list of, of advantages of our uh, of our uh, bachelor program is called living. So let me tell you a few words about living on Cyprus. Uh, uh, so first of all, uh, and and also about like the the costs involved. So the cost of our uh, of our bachelor program is 6,000 euro per year, which is actually much lower compared to some other like paid programs in, in Europe. At the same time, we have 15 scholarships by JetBrains, and these scholarships actually cover everything that you need to study, uh, namely to uh, so you, if you get, if you win this scholarship, then you uh, you do not need to pay anything for your studies. You will also be given an accommodation, and you will also be awarded a pocket money until uh, in the amount of three hundred euro. And all of that, uh, all of this is given for you for four years. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, dormitories is, is also an important part that you should check when uh, when applying to some universities. So we we are showing um, just four pictures here. So they are they are very good. They are hotel style dormitories. Uh, in case you get a grant from JetBrains, you will be staying in one of such dormitories, and you do not need to pay for them. Uh, in case you are going to pay for yourself, uh, it, it is going to cost you something like 500 euro per month, and it is located in 10 minutes uh, uh, walking distance from the university and also from, from the sea. Okay. So finally, let me just tell you a few words about, about Cyprus. So uh, here uh, at the top, you see a picture of, of Paphos. So this is very near to, to the university. And it looks like this all, almost during the whole year. So at, uh, at the bottom, you see some plots with, uh, with the temperature. Uh, so in the average temperature is, is around, I don't know, probably 20. Well, of course, it depends on, on the months. But in any case, so the, uh, in December, it, it can be 15. Uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, uh, there are also two hot months on, on Cyprus, uh, which are July and August, and it, it, it can be as, as hot as something like 33. Uh, uh, in many other months, the, the temperature is, is very extremely compatible. It is something like 20 or 25 degrees Celsius, which, uh, which makes your presence on Cyprus uh, very comfortable once again. Okay, so this is basically it. As my last slide, let me show you some links to, to some useful materials. So first of all, the, the left link, uh, leads to our landing page where you can find some more information, uh, more official information, so to say, about our bachelor program. The middle link shows you uh, uh, a link, uh, uh, leads you to a shared folder where we uploaded many pictures of, of our dormitories and we also uploaded the detailed curriculum of our program. And there is also a chat which is currently on Telegram where uh, you are invited to join this chat and to ask us any questions. We usually reply very quickly, uh, just like in, in one hour or so. 
Uh, yeah, so thank you for your attention. I, I hope you enjoyed uh, learning this algorithm. I hope to see some of you uh, uh, at our bachelor program and I'm ready to, to answer any, any questions you, you might have. And we have some questions, so let me just show you them on the screen. Uh -huh. Okay. It was about the algorithm. Oh, oh. Can you see? Uh, Is the question whether the yeah. process... Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Is the question whether the process ends or not? Yeah, okay. So I, I hope I addressed the, this question already in the presentation. So indeed, the process always ends and uh, it actually... Uh, so it stops when uh, the constructed matching is already a perfect matching and i basically proved that uh, uh, by the end of the day it will construct a perfect matching and as soon as we construct a perfect matching it is actually a stable matching yeah okay so let's move on to the next one So in the worst case, it will be big O of n squared, right? Uh, but note, so n is the number of men and the number of women, but note that the size of the preference lists is also n squared, right? Which basically makes this algorithm, the running time of this algorithm linear in the size of the input. Okay, so let's... Hop on to the next one. Do you accept sophomore transfer students or does anyone have to apply as a freshman? Uh, so, um, Maybe so I'll my... Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, Alena, if you, if you know how to answer, uh, please go ahead. Maybe our, our colleague Natalia, our program coordinator, can join us to answer this one. Yeah. Hi everyone. Yeah, uh, nice to see you here today. Thank you that you came here. Uh, and uh, yes, we uh, can. Um, uh, it's an indiv individual question. Uh, we actually have uh, free places uh, not granted, uh, self-paid places. Uh, we have them, uh, but uh, we, you will have interview. Uh, and then uh, you will uh, get an offer. Okay. Uh, so, um, just if you have any more questions uh, regarding your particular case, you can just write them down in our chats and we will answer them and uh, uh, make it <laughs> a little um, more wider because uh, sometimes it depends on the details. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Um, how many people live in one room in dormitory? Uh, two people live in one room. Yeah, it usually works like that. Okay, next one. Uh, what was the acceptance rate last year for both the program and the scholarship? Uh, as far as I remember, we received about uh, uh, 100 applications for the program, but I'm not quite sure about the scholarship. Maybe Natalia can... Help me with that. Uh, we had uh, a pre-test uh, last year and then interview and uh, the grant uh, was spread uh, according to interview interview results. So we do not have uh, uh, some uh, exact level, but uh, um, uh, uh, all the Olympiads, all the achievements, uh, all the school results, uh, of, co of course, were taken uh, into consideration. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah let, let, let me probably yeah. add, so I, I don't remember the numbers, but if you're asking about the acceptance rate, then uh, one, uh, the number of scholarships was also 15. The, uh, I think that most of the yes. people applied for, for our program. 
applied also for uh, for a scholarship and the number of such applications was uh, i don't know probably 150 something like like this so an acceptance rate is is something like 10 percent but but not all of them actually qualified to to get uh, an to get the scholarships because a scholarship because our process is the following so we we will first ask you to to go through a through a test the test is something like you need to solve uh 10 problems in mathematics and programming uh like on high school mathematics and high school programming in in four hours and then those who solve sufficiently many problems are invited to an interview so the number of people who were invited to interview i i don't remember exactly right now but it was something like uh, 50 for example uh, or something like this out of these 50 students we selected 15 students who were awarded uh, scholarships yeah okay thank you uh then the next one will the program be the same next year uh yeah yeah but basically uh, we always try to adjust a program a bit for example it is this year that we uh, actually started to to teach large language models uh, and uh, the next year if uh, uh, most probably we will also adjust it a little bit uh, but in general we will keep the structure more or less the same so sometimes we add more electives sometimes we uh, we organize some public lectures when some great professor visits cyprus for example but uh, other than that it is going to be more or less the same right okay um what's the admission process do you have exams or interviews I, <laughs> we can go through this one once again i, I think uh yeah yeah so let, let me just ma make it explicit once again the admission process indeed is the following so you will first be asked to go through a test where during uh, three or four hours you will be solving three uh, something like 10 problems in mathematics and in in programming so these are basic programs uh problems in mathematics and in programming mathematical problems usually require you to compute some value and in programming you need to uh, implement uh, some short piece of code in a programming language of your choice uh, so that it passes uh, some prior tests uh, then if you solve sufficiently many problems uh, for example at least six out of ten then we invite you to an interview and after the interview we are ready to tell you whether we uh, whether you can be admitted and whether we can give you a scholarship yeah okay uh so the next one is um oh sorry this one was already taken this one uh can you please clarify based on which factors 15 students are selected for grant funding uh yeah so it is uh it is difficult to formalize but we uh, we take several uh several factors into account so the one of the most important factors is the number of problems that you solved during the test uh, then we also uh discuss your motivation with you during uh, this interview process we take into account your experience in participating in some high school competitions and in participating in some programming projects uh, and so on okay let's move on uh, what documents are required for admission uh, oh N N natasha could you could you please help with with that one uh, you, 
you should apply uh, with uh, your school living certificate uh, and uh, also uh, you will require to, uh, to have um, some English tests. Uh, there is, uh, uh, it can be IELTS, uh, TOEFL, a password uh, uh, and uh, the level is not high. Uh, but our students uh, have uh, English classes uh, during their first year. Um, and uh, actually, there is some list of documents, uh, but they are just uh, getting from your authorities, like uh, um, criminal record uh, certificate, etc. Uh, so the main your document is a school living certificate. Yeah, it also depends on whether you uh, need a visa or not, because this way the list of the documents can be changed uh, dramatically. <laughs> yes, so uh, if That's you have right. any questions, once again, join our chat and we will answer them. Uh, okay. Um, do you have a uh, uh, related graduate program? Uh, well, n not yet. Uh, however, so we're, uh, we're thinking about opening a master program at some point, probably in one year or so. Also, uh, there is a PhD program at Neapolis University of Paphos. And if you are interested in working in some of our research groups, then you can definitely apply for PhD studies in uh, in just Neapolis University of Paphos. Uh, I mean, we, we don't need a separate like uh, graduate program for this and, and we will be happy to work with you. Okay, thank you. Um, next question. So can I apply as a freshman then, even though I already an attended another school? As far as I know... No, no it's uh, prohibited by the law, by the Cyprus law. Oh, I see. I see. Uh -huh. Okay, but you still can try to transfer, so just <laughs> uh, join our chat and ask your questions to one of our coordinators. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, is it possible to change direction as a last resort? Mm, I'm not actually sure that I that I get the question. Where, which which direction? Which? Okay, let's. Uh, uh, Dane, if you are still watching us, like. Yeah, if you could <laughs> can please, you do, please be it, just but, yeah. yeah a bit more specific about that. Okay, uh, next one is um, what theory do we need to know for the entrance test and interview? Are there any resources available? Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so this is a, a, a very natural question and indeed, so if you follow the, let me take a look at my slides, if you follow the second link here, which is called materials, uh, there is a shared folder and inside this shared folder there is a detailed curriculum of our program with, uh, with a section uh, with frequently asked questions and and this particular question is indeed uh, the frequently asked one. Uh, and here is an answer to this question. Uh, we provide a detailed list of, of things we expect you to know before taking our test. So some basic programming, some basic mathematics like logarithms, uh, I don't know, some uh, geometry, a bit of calculus and so on. And for each of these topics, we actually provide an online, a free online resource where we recommend you to study it. So please take a look at this curriculum and uh, I, I hope it contains a very detailed answer to your question, but in case you you have any further questions about about uh, about these resources? Please also feel free to ask us in in the chat. Yeah, I also wanted to add that uh, if you will go to our landing landing page and subscribe to our news to get all of the updates about the program, the tests, uh, and things like that, uh, the first letter will be in your email box just a seconds away with all of these materials so just feel free to use uh, 
this technique as well. And let's move on to the next question. Um, are there mandatory internship during the program? If there are no, whether the faculty assists the student to find the internship option? Uh, um, right, so in uh, usually we do not require you to do an internship during the summer for the following reason. We uh, realize that it might be your choice to relax <laughs> during summer. So if you decide to, to take a rest during the summer, this is your choice and we are completely okay with it. So um, uh, we in probably after the first year, this is the most reasonable thing to do. So after the first year, we usually encourage you without any like pushing uh, to to apply for internships and we will help you to to find it if you ask us because it will uh, give you this job experience which is important uh, in various uh, respects uh, I mean first of all Mm, job experience is important uh, uh, as uh, as a line in your CV because when applying for a real job, not for an internship, it is good to have to show that uh, that you did a few internships. Also, it will help you to to find an area which you like the most. So probably you will try to do I don't know something like machine learning. Uh, the next time you try to do, I don't know, databases or, or robotics and so on. Uh, so it, uh, and many of our students do internships during summer, but once again, it is up to you. So this is not a, a mandatory part of, of the educational program. During the last year, of course, you need to work on your thesis, which is, which is similar to doing an internship uh except that it is not uh, a paid uh, thing so uh, when doing an internships you are paid some salary when working on your like bachelor thesis you are not paid of course yes yeah, okay so oh, we can move on to the next one uh can the trifle be replaced by the sat or an interview uh, no, there should be um, some accredited uh, test. Uh, TOEFL, IELTS, uh, Password, uh, or PET. Uh, and uh, uh, SAT, uh, it will be a plus in, you, in your resume. Uh, but uh, it can replace, uh, can, uh, TOEFL cannot be replaced by it. Okay. Uh... Dane is uh, back here. So his first question was, is it possible to change direction as a last resort? And uh, he meant faculty, for example, from AI to something else, like changing your oh, major. I see, I see. Uh, uh, yes, I believe this is possible. So usually when you are changing uh, a bachelor program inside one, um, uh one university that this is much easier than transferring from one university to, to the other one but you still need to probably to to pass some additional exams or, or something but but the, but this should be possible right and and the good news is that uh, at neapolis university of Paphos, there is another program which is called apply uh Applied computer science, if uh, if I'm not mistaken, which is like m I would say more applied th than our program. So uh, it is not that heavy on mathematics as as our program. So if you feel that you do not, if you kind of uh, start studying at our program and realize that it contains much more mathematics that uh, than you want then probably it is indeed a good idea for you to, to transfer to a more applied program. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, how extensive are the courses, especially the ones that are only one semester long? For example, one semester of algebra is not that much. Is it very dense or you only cover the basics? <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, very good question. So indeed, one semester of algebra is not enough. And for that reason, uh, in that semester, we made it extremely dense and the students were not very happy. So, uh, so now we're discussing uh the possibility of adding the second semester of uh of algebra so in general we try to cover a lot of fundamental mathematics right uh, on the one hand on the other hand of course uh we do not want our students to overflow so to say so we we always talk to our students and we always uh we we can ask them whether they are comfortable with the current teaching or not sometimes and we also twice per semester we organize uh like polls sometimes it is uh, anonymous polls and uh, and uh, each time we ask whether it is interesting for them to study whether it is uh, like fast enough or slow enough or, and so on uh, right so but in general i would say that our mathematical courses are relatively uh, are relatively intense yeah i mean compared to some other programs in europe for example or in the us yeah okay uh, thank you for that uh, next one uh, can i apply to a program if i'll be underaged at the start um, actually, it depends on your age, but uh, we had 17 years old students, yes, and they get their scholarship. Okay. Uh, when do I know whether scholarship is applied or not? Uh, usually, uh, the decision after the scholarship is uh, in two or four weeks, as far as I know. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, after I, the I test guess we... Interview. Right, right. So, so something like the the tentative date of this announcement is probably the the end of June, for example. So the the, uh, the previous last year, yeah, it, it was, was the, on the first of July. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I was quite close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, are there any other types of scholarships, for example, based on health status? Uh, so at JetBrains currently we do not have such uh, such scholarships. I'm afraid uh, it is not excluded at the same time that such scholarships are available somewhere in Europe or some European programs probably can support such cases. But at this point, I I just don't know any any specifics, unfortunately. Okay. Um, what's the level of English is required for admission? Mm. Um. So I, I'm afraid I, I don't remember what is a formal requirement. So N N Natasha could... About B1? Uh, the level should be about B1. B1. Uh, B1. B1. Uh, password uh, is a rather simple test uh, and uh, I should say that uh, no one who um, got grant uh, previous years uh, uh, all the uh, all our students uh, were successfully um, um, successfully got this test uh, it was not a problem no uh, we had uh, uh, no negative results. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I would actually, yeah, uh, I, yeah. I'm sorry. So I, I, I would actually say that it is much easier to to get through our mathematical <laughs> programming tests than to pass the English test. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, MIT uh, simple two uh, asks us once again. Can't I apply as a freshman, even if I am studying at a university in another country and not in Cyprus? Yes, you can. Okay, that's great. Um, we have uh, two more questions. And if you have something else, then uh, make sure that you wrote them down 
because we have some <laughs> time limit. So let's go through the last two. And if you have so many questions, uh, many questions, uh, sorry, <laughs> something like a brain worm for me today. If you have some more questions, please come join us at our chat. Uh, the um, question from Evgeny is, what's your target demographics? Is this the right place for a somewhat seasoned uh, professional to catch up on higher education? If not, what would you recommend in this case? Uh... Yeah, you are definitely welcome to to apply for our program. So we we have no restrictions like this. So uh, in case you decide, in case you are looking for for other ways of uh, of studying computer science, uh, you can definitely check. So uh, nowadays, actually, there is a lot of material uh, available online, and also in particular. There are many courses by, by JetBrains. Uh, you can check with JetBrains Academy and on HyperSkill platform, for example. So this is uh, very good for, for self-education. Uh, but once again, please feel free to apply for our program. So we definitely have no restrictions uh, that would uh, disallow you to, to apply or, or something. Okay. Um, will there be an opportunity to pass a password test after arriving to Cyprus or should it be done previously to that? Uh, once you are, uh, you got the offer, we, uh, we will send you uh, a free uh, invitation to this test. But you should pass it before arriving to before, Cyprus. Yeah? Before okay. arriving to Cyprus. Okay. Uh, you won't get a, a visa without this test. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so next question. Do I need to take any other exams besides the entrance exams? For example, the United the Unified State exam. No, you you don't need. So you you need to present the school living certificate if I uh, if I call it correctly, right? Then you need to pass our our test and and go through through interview, and then the English exam is the only one that you need to pass in order to formally get accepted to to the program. Okay, uh, Jura asks, uh, do I need a motivation letter for admission? Uh, yeah, so if you if you pass our test successfully, then we will ask you to submit uh, a motivation letter indeed, and we will even ask you to optionally submit a recommendation letter probably from, from somebody. From for your, example, from your teacher? Yeah, yeah, from your high school teacher or from somebody who you worked with on some project or, or something like this, right? And we also take it into account. So it is not extremely important, but but it allows you to to tell us something about uh, about yourself even before the interview, because during the interview, well, some people are, are nervous and also the, we are pressed in time during the interview and for this motivation letter you can, I mean, you can spend several weeks working on it and tell, tell us everything that, that you wanted. Okay, uh, do you accept the TOEFL home edition or must it be in person one? I'm afraid I'm not sure, but uh, as far as I know, uh, it should be in person one. Okay, so we can get back to this uh, one after, yes. afterwards. Yeah, okay. Um, are students of different nationalities enrolled in the program? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, so <laughs> feel free to join us. Uh, okay. Mm, so the password test is a remote one, and I don't have to take it before submitting the application. 
correct? Right, correct. Yes, yes, right. So that's great. Um, and also, <laughs> MIT uh, number two asks, uh, when is the application deadline? Uh, oh, I, I, I forgot already, but uh, so, uh, Natasha, could, could we think? Yeah, uh, we think that uh, this year application deadline for grant places will be on the 1st of May. Uh, and uh, um, we guess that uh, we will uh, have to um, admit applications, uh, other applications, till the 15th of June. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, does the interview take place online? Or is it necessary to come to Cyprus for this? Oh yeah, yeah. It is uh, everything is online, right? Our our test is a, is an online test, and the interview is also online. Okay, I hope that's all for today. Thank you for your questions and for your answers, Alexandra Natalia. That was great. And also, if uh, you want to ask them something else, you can al always um, join us and. Uh, in our chats uh, and uh, ask any question that you will have, you will um, <laughs> still have. So thank you for that. And I think that's it. Yep, Alona, thank you. And thank you everybody for, for coming in and for, for asking us so many questions. Hope to see at least some of you at, at our bachelor program. Yeah, bye. Yeah, have a good day, have a good night. Bye-bye.